A few of you guys in the comments have asked me to do a Lumion Legacy Nuzlocke. Now, this is something I've always thought would be a good idea, but I wasn't sure if people really wanted to see it. I'm a man of the people though, so I got straight to streaming the game as soon as I could. Before I start telling you how it went, I'll explain the rules that I was going to follow. First off, I need to name everything I catch. That way, I get more attached to every Lumion I find, and it's an actual impact on me when and or if they die. Second of all, I can only catch my first encounter in each location. Some areas have no loading zone, but two sides are different names. The way I count this is by looking at the met location text on the summary of each Lumion. If it says a new area on each Lumion there, then I count it as a unique encounter. Third of all, if my team dies in the tutorial, then it doesn't count since there's nothing I can really do to prepare for the fight. Last but not least, the obvious rules like Dupes Claws, meaning I can't catch two of the same species of Lumion, then Shiny Claws, which overrides Dupes Claws, and then finally once they die, they're dead forever. I also stream this whole run on Twitch, so go follow me there if you want to see more of my content. Shameless self-promotion. Alright, so since this is a Nuzlocke, I needed a game plan. I had to calculate all my available options to prepare for each upcoming fight in the story. After looking at all the starters, I decided that Eaglet was my best option. Since the first important fight in the story is against Duskit, the spirit mind type, that means Eaglet, the light type starter, is objectively the best choice due to the fact that he's immune to most of Duskit's moves. Even if he dies later on down the line, he's the optimal choice for the beginning of the game since there isn't really anything else to counter Duskit before fighting him. After naming Eaglet Fortniter thanks to Twitch chat, we went on to catch our first Lumion, which was a Twiddle we named Tweer, and then for our second encounter, we got a Bun Puff that we named Hotline Bling. I should also mention that this first stream took place during the Lunar New Year event, and so that's why we got a Bun Puff in Gale Forest. Our next encounter is a Gekulu, which we name... Oh. Okay. Um, never mind then. After that we had to go fight the first battle theater, so after grinding for around half an hour, we were finally ready. Sadly though, during the battle theater fight, we lost a team member. R.I.P. Hotline Bling, you will forever be in our hearts. After getting the Lumi Watch upgrade, it was time to move on to Route 4, where we caught a Slugling that I named Gary. Then Tweeter evolved, and we caught a Babor which I named Peppa. Once I started my next stream, I was straight off to Igneous Hollow. There I encountered a Skilava, which I named Gator, and then a few seconds later, we lost our second Lumion. Rest in peace Peppa, you did basically nothing. And then shortly after, we lost Gary as well, because this area gives you practically no new Lumion encounters and expects you to fight 300 trainers in a row. Luckily though, after beating all the monks at Igneous Hollow, Fortniter, our Eaglet, evolved, and we were finally finished with that extremely balanced area. Next was the Pagoda, where we encountered our next Lumion, a twiddle we named Skit, followed by the battle with the corrupt Ikazune that I was very nervous about, and for good reason since it ended up murdering Fortniter. At this point in the run, that had been the saddest death yet. He was with us the longest so far. He saved us from so many fights and tanked so many hits, but alas, the Nuzlocke gods deemed him unworthy. A true rest in peace for our fallen comrade. Once we beat Ikezune, it was time for the second battle theater. Oh. Right. We're too low leveled. So we spent another 30 minutes grinding levels again. There's a lot of grinding in this game just to reach a high enough level to fight the battle theater. Also, while we were grinding, Gator evolved. Once we were ready to fight the battle theater, we blazed through, pun intended, and won easily without any deaths. After, we went and caught a wisp up in Heiwa Cemetery that Twitch chat decided to name Dog Corpse, as well as a female calf note on Route 6 that we named Evil Cow 2000, and then a Chompactor that chat aptly named Hi YouTube. By the next stream, I had done some off-stream grinding just to get all my Lumions on par with everyone else. I evolved Skit, Dog Corpse, Hi YouTube, Evil Cow 2000, and I got a new Lumion, which is a gleaming female calf note off stream, which I decided to name Albino. Anyways, next I have the Lucas and Lucy fight, which were both a breeze, and then a ton of story at Palut Corp, followed by the Battle Theater and then the Corrupt Protagon fight, each of which all went off without a hitch. Meanwhile, we caught a Scorb, and I named it UFO. Then we continued on to Route 8, where we caught a Florent that I named Ant-Man, as well as a Zaleo I named Sphinx from the UMV Dives, a Gopi from back in Midistown that I named Lafiche, a Swimp that I named Sushi on Route 2, and a Wimpor that Chat decided to name Funny Name on Route 7. After catching all those Lumions, I decided it was time to head to Lotsun Beach to fight the Corrupt Samurai, which showed up as question mark level, which I thought was weird, but didn't look into it too much. I started the battle and immediately lost Ant-Man, then Hi YouTube, then Albino, then Tweeter, 
then skit, which meant I had lost the run. All our progress and time, it was all for nothing. I lost, and I had nothing to show for it. But wait a second, doesn't this whole thing seem fishy? I mean, the whole battle I had barely even dealt half of its health and damage. My whole team of five Lumines only dealt half of its health? No, that wasn't possible. I checked the wiki for Samarine, and there was no information on it. I then checked the Corrupt Lumion's appendix on the wiki, which did show Samarine this time, but provided no information on its level. Then I checked the Watson Beach wiki, which finally showed me the secret level of the Corrupt Samarine, which turned out to be... Level 40?! You're telling me this thing is 10 levels over the trainers that are IN Watson Beach, and also it gives you question mark for its level instead of actually just telling you? Why is it a secret? Duskett's level wasn't a secret, and he's a roamer! Samarine isn't even a roaming Lumion! It's not even that hard to get! Why is this such a rigged fight?! <sighs> Sorry, I got a little angry there. So, after all that, I had technically lost the run. I didn't have it in my rules anywhere that I needed to be on par with every Lumion that I fight, so despite being a stupid way to lose, it still counts. But what if I hadn't lost? You can unsubscribe or dislike the video if you disagree with my decision here, but I just wanted to see if I came back with some level 40 Lumions, if I could beat it. So that's what I did. By next stream, I had all my Lumions, including the ones in my boxes, all up to exactly level 40, and it was time for a rematch. I made sure to give myself the best chance possible. After looking at all my options, I decided Sphinx was the smartest play. He's electric ancient type, which means he resists water moves thanks to his ancient typing, and his electric type attacks are four times effective since Samarine is metal water type, which are both weak to electric attacks. By the way, before you say it in the comments, I'm aware Sphinx's electric typing makes him neutral to water attacks. Regardless, he's still my best option for this fight. After starting the battle with Samarine and using a stab electric type move that was four times effective, it barely even did a quarter health and damage to it so this fight clearly wasn't going to be free at all. I ended up getting a lucky turn 2 paralyzed thanks to Thunder Slam, and then stupidly stayed in for a Thunderclap even though I would have lost Sphinx to another hit. But luckily, it was unable to move due to the paralysis as well as still surviving. How is this a fair fight? After finally realizing how stupid I was for leaving Sphinx in, since I need him for the Battle Fiendor later on, I decided to switch into UFO, which I evolved into Gardron, who easily tanked a Water Bomb, and then I finished it off with a Thunder Strike. Since I finally beat that horrifying Samarine fight, I decided I should try and calm my nerves by catching a new Lumion. <sighs> Puff. Great. Chat named him Glossy Tim, and off to the box he went. Then it was time to go to Lanthian City, where we did some... confusing story quests, to say the least. Clicked enough to make my fingers hurt, chose the best outfit for Jake, Fought a lackluster fight with Lucy, caught a Katone in the Atlantean City Living District which I named Aristocat, and then got roped into a fight with the owner of Colosso Chops the Ramen Shop thanks to Lucas's gluttony, and we lost Dog Corpse. This death was personally sad for me since, if you didn't know, my favorite type combination is Fire Ghost type, which was Dog Corpse's type. She wasn't part of too many battles, but she was with us for a while. Rest in peace, Dog Corpse. You deserve it. The last thing we have to do is the museum, which basically turns the game into a cookie clicker with all the dialogue, but once we were done with that, it was time for the battle theater. I tried preparing by bringing the best team I could, made sure I had enough potions and sufficient items, and then off I went. Every battle in this battle theater is a double battle, which is a unique gimmick that only this one has. Luckily though, I came prepared. I put Sphinx and Ant-Man in the front of my party, both of which either resist and or have super effective moves. My first problem arose when I saw Banfino. Fun fact, this thing's type is Water Plant, so it's not weak to Electric type, meaning my Sphinx strategy just fell apart. Due to my focus on Banfino, I wasn't paying attention to Mawamurk, who used Driving Force and switched out Sphinx for Sushi. I didn't think too much of it at the time, but remember what I said about Banfino being Water Plant type? Well, once I took out Mawamurk, they sent in another Banfino and used Nature's Force on Sushi, which killed it in one hit. After that, the battle wasn't too hard, but I was running out of options for extra team members and had to think of something fast. If I wanted to go back to the PC for another Lumion, I'd have to re-battle the same trainer with the two Banfinos, which really wasn't an option for me. I had one choice, my Wimpor that I was smart enough to bring in on one of my bench slots. The only problem was that I'd have to walk around for a long time. So that's what I did, 
and after 40 minutes of running around like a headless chicken, I finally had a Stratazor. Because this was the end of the game, I wanted to make sure I used every trick up my sleeve. I stopped worrying about holding off on items, and used up all my gummies from my mastery quest that I had done on all my Lumions to give them a buff. I used most of them on Sphinx, since it was my highest damaging Lumion, and it had 4 times effective moves on the rest of the Lumions in the Battle Theater. The second fight of the Battle Theater, though terrifying, was extremely easy, and I beat it with no casualties. And the third battle, sadly, was... <sighs> really easy! Haha! <laughs> Woo! Luckily, thanks to our precise planning, we were able to beat the entire battle theater with only a single Lumion casualty. And with that, we've beaten the game. Technically, since there's nothing new added. I think I'm done with Lumion Legacy at this point. I've seen and done everything there is to do in the game. I've seen every update. I've seen every event. Everything just... It's not fun anymore. It just feels like a chore. It's not really... It doesn't feel like I'm playing a game. Also, I wanted to say that I'm aware about all of the clones, the Pokemon Brick Bronze Forever, you know, all that stuff. I, I've I've even played some of them, so you know, you can st you can stop like saying in my in my comments. I'm I'm aware. I know about them. Um, but yeah, I, I just wanted to move on from Lumion Legacy, unless you guys wanted to see more stuff. But there's really nothing I can think of to to do in the game. I was gonna try Doodle World soon, because a few of the uh, people in my Discord server have suggested that. And I might do Tales of Tarantino whenever that comes out, if I understand properly what that game is about. But, yeah, I think I'm done with Lumion Legacy. Also, oh yeah, I was gonna stream Doodle World when I go live, like, when I first play it. I, I haven't played it yet, so I, I don't know anything about what that's about. All I know is that it's probably similar to... Pokemon and Lumion Legacy and all that stuff. Oh yeah, you can join the Discord if you want to suggest me some games. Uh, anyways, goodbye.